something not right about this hallway. It's everything seems to happen here. What? <laughs> What's that? My t-shirt was just pulled, proper pulled. So you can... Okay. Now that's what you did before. Who was... the spirit, the dark figure, that tried to scare us out of this building? Who are you? What's your name? No, 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 no. We return to one of the most haunted locations that we have ever investigated. On our last visit here, Phil and I were going to terminate the investigation due to our safety as we felt that we may be attacked as something did not want us here. We return to Englefield Hall. The building since our last investigation has had renovations taking place. In 1880, the main building was constructed by Odeson son of Egham for a temperance league, originally as a coffee tavern called the Victoria. The intent was to provide an alternative form of refreshment to reduce the alcohol consumption of the workmen involved in building the nearby Founders Hall of Royal Engineering College. It was opened in December 1880 by George Sir Alexander Taylor, who was the principal of the Royal Engineering College. By 1910, the coffee tavern had evolved into a full temperance hotel. During this time, it was also used as a shelter throughout World War I. A 
around 1919, the building was acquired by the Red Triangle Club, who added a new main hall in 1920. A billiard room and a cinema were opened and the foundation stones were laid by Princess Elena Victoria and Princess Christina. By the late 1930s, the property had fallen into poor condition and was taken over by the local council. It was then used again as a shelter for the local people throughout World War II and as a top secret location to discuss military operations. Throughout the war between 1940 and 1945, the building was used as a safe haven providing classrooms for pupils until 1963. Two classes used the main hall and another occupied what is now known as room 3 on the upper floor. For 20 years after, the location stood empty until it was rescued by the St Jude's Players, a local amateur dramatics group and is now used as a social club venue for events. The reports from visitors and staff are of shadow figures, footsteps, banging sounds, voices, a small child has been seen hiding inside the cupboard of room 3, a spirit cat wanders the ground floor, and on the top floor which is the attic, an old lady has been seen walking from room to room. On our last investigation here, we came into contact with several spirits and one that did not want us here and it was going to do its best to make us leave. Bloody hell, we own half dark in here, Phil. It certainly is. Can't see anything. No. I thought I heard someone walking. I did as well. Movie. Talk to me about. <laughs> oh man, yes, it's moving. To keep completely still. We have a very sensitive digital recorder. That will pick up your voice. Whoa. <laughs> Noises from the stage area, Phil. There was knocking. Yeah, definitely. There was. It sounded like footsteps on the stairs. I don't know what's happening, but it all seems to be just, mm. all of a sudden, things are starting to happen. Hello? With all of our investigations, I spend time taking intro shots of the location. And whilst I'm filming the ground floor hallway, the camera captures a shadow figure. And this is the exact same area where we caught the shadow figure on our last investigation. During the daytime at Englefield Hall, we were being filmed and interviewed by Back to Back TV who were going to air our investigation that took place at Rendlesham Forest and it is to be shown on the unexplained files. Whilst I was being interviewed, 
Phil takes a wander around the building. Last time I was here, somebody opened and shut the door, which was over there. Do you remember doing that? Do you remember me? You probably don't, to be honest. Everybody gets freaked out by the little cupboard over there. Apparently, there's a child that's in the cupboard, which I, to be honest, don't believe for a minute. So I open the door and there'll be a child sat there. As you can see, it's just really a cleaning cupboard. Okay. That was a big bang. So I open the door and there'll be a child sat there. As you can see, it's just really a cleaning cupboard. Okay. That was a big bang. So why was it when I opened this cupboard, you made a banging noise? Do you want to come out and play? If you're a child, you can come out, it's not a problem. I'll leave the door ajar for you. You can come out, it's not a problem. You can come out, it's not a problem. Anyway, I'll leave you to it. I'm going to leave that door open. If you, Feel free to shut it if you want to. It's not a problem. Oh, right. I'll see you in a bit. Okay, I just heard that. I heard you make a big bang. Was that because you didn't want me to leave? We have our static cams in place. Static cam one is on the stage in the main hall. Static cam two is in the main hall covering the two hallways. Static Cam 3 is on the first floor hallway. Static Cam 4 is inside room 3. Peter from Back to Back TV will be joining us for the first session of the investigation. We're back at Englefield Hall. Um, you may notice uh, our friend there, Peter, who's uh, he's from Back to Back TV, he's doing a featurette on us and also on Englefield Hall. So we're back here now um, to investigate this evening. So, can I ask you, do you remember who I am? Are you up on the stage area? Did I just hear you move? Can you 
knock again like you did last time. How many of you are here? Can you see me? Who was the spirit, the dark figure that tried to scare us out of this building? Can you tell me your name, please? That way we can maybe research you and find out who you are and also find out what your story is, how you became to be here. Can you do that for me, please? If you can speak into the red light on this device, it will pick up your voice and then we can play it back and listen to what you have to say. Who's there? Hello? Can you hear my voice? Let me see you again. Come walking down that hallway, just like you did before. What's happening, Phil? There was, there was noise coming from over that direction through the door down towards the kitchen. Hello? Who's there? Who are you? If you can hear my voice, can you come towards me? Come and join us in the main hall. I kid you not, down there on the floor, it looked like something come round that corner. I see a dark small figure look around the corner at the bottom of the hallway, which was the size of a child, but none of our cameras was pointing in that area at the time. Peter from Back to Back TV leaves the location and we now commence the investigation up on the first floor in room three. Well, I'm back in room three at Englefield Hall. This is the room where it's reported that there is a child 
in the cupboard um, to my right. And uh, people have heard noises and they've seen shadows coming from that. Now I popped up here earlier today and had a bit of time to kill so I did a little session on my own. Uh, the sun was out at the time and um, I got some knocking, knocking noises when I was asking questions. So what I'd like to do is firstly reintroduce myself. My name is Phil and the two gentlemen who are with me, I've got Mark sitting to my right and Jeff sitting over in the corner there. Now I was here before, about a year ago, and at the time the door out of this room opened and shut on its own. So what I'd like to do is ask you to join me now, like you did earlier, and come and talk to me. Now the other experience which we've had in this building is somebody who perhaps doesn't want us here. Somebody who ran towards us last time. If that's you, if you don't want us here, then you know, just you only have to let us know. But unless you make yourself known, then we have no way of knowing whether we're welcome here or not. Now, one way you can do it, rather than making a noise or banging, is to touch one of us. And I would suggest, as Mark hasn't been here before, that you touch Mark. That way he knows that you're here, and then he can tell me. Um, Phil, mm -hmm. something went... It was really quick. Something went along the wall, it looked like, where Mark is sitting. Mm -hmm. um, it was a dark shadow that moved really quickly. I see a shadow move across the wall near to Mark. Here is the footage in slow motion and enhanced. room three and we set up Mark for a solo EVP session in the attic where an old lady is said to reside. Mark spent 30 minutes in the attic and received no evidence so Phil and I make our way down to the ground floor. I'm standing in one of the rooms on the ground floor. Whoa, what was that? That was a child's voice. It sounded like it, didn't it? Phil and I hear a disembodied voice of a child saying, hey, here is the audio taken from Phil's digital recorder. I'm standing in one of the rooms on the ground floor. Whoa, what was that? I'm standing in one of the rooms on the ground floor. Whoa, what was that? Come 
come into this room. Run into this room. It's not the area you're standing on, is it, Jeff? No, it's not you. It's definitely walking on this floor. Come into this room. Run into this room. Come into this room. Run into this room. Yeah, we're getting some good knocking from somewhere. I can't work out where you are. Could you come into the middle? If you come up to these devices just here, they'll let us know that you're here. Why is it you feel drawn to this particular room? There's something really close to you. It, it literally sounds like it's coming from next to you. I've, have you, you've done what we've said, haven't you? You've come up into the middle of the room. Are you standing behind my friend? Put your hand on his shoulder. I know you can do this because last time you had hold of his shirt. Yeah, it was definitely a noise. What? The <laughs> smell. My t-shirt was just pulled, proper pulled, and it made me jump. Okay, that's fine. Sorry I jumped. Can you do that again? I'm sorry about that. I didn't mean to make you jump by jumping, but I wasn't expecting it. Are you lost here? Is that why you're, trying, you're communicating with us? Because you need our help. If you are, let me come down here. Now I'm down here now. So you can... Okay. Now that's what you did before. Now, I've been here all day and there's been no noises from over in that corner. None whatsoever. And this is how you did it last time. That's brilliant. Do you want to play another little game? This would be a good one because I've got a friend who hasn't experienced you before and he's only in the other room if I go and get him and get him to stand still you can pull his t-shirt will you wait for me just a second hold on All right Jeff I'll just go and get him okay now I said to you we can play a little game this is Mark now, he hasn't been here before. Now, is it possible you could do to Mark what you did to Jeff and what you've done to me already this evening?
because you can make him jump as well. That's it. Walk round. Go on. You know what you want to do. Go around behind Mark. Let me tell Mark what you did, just so he doesn't get too scared if you do it. Basically, you pulled at our clothing, didn't you? We all hear a disembodied voice of a child again, responding to Phil, confirming that it was the child that had pulled our clothing by saying, it was me. Here is the audio, enhanced. Basically, you pulled at our clothing, didn't you? <laughs> Basically, you pulled at our clothing, didn't you? As we take a short break, we go outside and we notice that a light has been turned on in one of the rooms upstairs. I turn off the light earlier and we close the door. There was no lights on and now all of a sudden the lights come on so we're going to see what's, uh, what's happened. This is the room here. Hello? On the wall. That's bizarre because that was definitely off. That was turned off. And that has to be forcibly switched on. Jack, just open that door again. I'll definitely make sure. I want to show that that light is switched on. It's off. So if it. Oh. Now I'm going to. What? The door. So now it's locked. If the light comes back on, we know that someone's inside or something's inside. Okay. Okay, downstairs. That door in room three started to open again. And we know that that, we know the room's sealed. There's no windows open, there's nothing. It looks like things might start to kick off again. The three of us go down to the main hall to prepare for the final part of the investigation. We set up the SLS cam with Stickman technology and also set the cam to 3D monitoring.
so this is the uh, part of the hallway where on our first investigation we had the footsteps running at us and also earlier on today I saw a black figure look round the corner at us earlier on in the investigation. Is there anyone that can hear my voice? If you can hear me, Mark is sitting in the middle of the room there, in the main hall. If you want to, you can go and sit in one of the chairs next to him, keep him company. He's sitting there by himself. down the stairs towards us. The footsteps are so clear that they need no enhancing. Static Cam 3 that is on the first floor filming that area, the footsteps are even louder. So um, we're standing in the, this little hallway, Mark's in the main hallway looking through here and he's seeing something moving. Again, this is the same hallway where we're seeing the shadows move and we saw a shadow figure earlier look down the hallway. Who's here? Who's here in this hallway? Why are you here in this hallway? Is there something you would like to tell us? 
If so, please speak to us now. static going through both of my arms really really heavy something come walking or walked up to that door and all the floorboards on the floor I could hear them all creak As I approach the doorway on my right, I hear movement on the floorboards as if someone is coming towards me. And just before this happens, our SLS cam that is in the main hall captures a figure as it passes Mark and enters the room next to us. and there was like resistance against the camera. It was almost like being pushed back towards me. It was the first time I've ever experienced that. It's this hallway, there's something wrong here. Something's not right. Do you want to go back through the other hallway? No. I'm not backing off now. No way. Instead of trying to scare us all the time, you could have the decency to at least tell us your name. You know who we are? Who are you? something not right about this hallway it's everything seems to happen here I wonder what this was used for before this part of the building it seems uh, very active Your name, please. No, 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 no. no. What I saw scared me. 
I am in shock and I am confused. As I am standing in the doorway, I see an old lady walk out from the wall. All I can remember is that she had an old white dress on. Her hair was either blonde or grey and the reason why I reacted in the way I did was because as she come out of the wall she then turned quickly in my direction and I thought I was going to be attacked. After reviewing all of our cameras, the figure was not captured as each of our cameras was just out of shot. Hey! Who are you? What's your name? I saw you. What's your name? You okay, buddy? Yeah, I'm all right. What was the figure like? Shit! Jeff! What, what's going on? What? Ah, Someone right. just pushed me into the wall and I bent my fingers back. It's in here. Okay, tell me what you saw, in your own words, as much as you can remember. I saw a woman with long hair, not sure what colour, maybe, maybe slightly blonde or grey, with a white dress come through the wall and walking towards me. That's what I saw. How tall? How tall? Yeah. Did you see her? disappear or did you just turn and... I move? just moved away because she came out the wall and started moving round towards me. That's yeah. what I saw. We end the investigation at Englefield Hall and I travel back to our hotel. I was unable to sleep as I was still processing what had taken place. So, um, back at the hotel room now, away from Englefield Hall, um, I've been sort of sitting here processing what took place, especially my experience. Uh, I saw this lady walk out of the wall with long hair, white dress, and come towards me which took me by surprise um, I was in shock it startled me and when you go into shock you everything goes out the window I can't remember exactly what I did I know I was I had tears in my eyes um, It was something that I hadn't seen for a long time. I wasn't expecting that. And Englefield Hall didn't disappoint yet again. In fact, better than the first investigation. On the way back here in the car, I spoke to Phil and I told him that I would still go back 
for a third investigation at Englefield Hall because I think it's one of the best paranormal places that we've ever investigated. So, ladies and gentlemen, I will not sleep tonight. You will. Good night.